Hey, how's it going guys? Zeta here. So I want to discuss relating to the PlayStation 6. You know, what kind of direction that Sony is thinking of going? What kind of differences should there, at least what we should see comparing this to the PlayStation 5? And yet, is it going to be going to a good direction? Because with everything that has been going about with the PlayStation 5, honestly speaking, not very good. Because with the release of the PlayStation 5 Pro and especially how high price stack it really is and just like insanity in my opinion as well a lot of people feel the same way you are kind of be wondering wait 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 so the PlayStation 6 is gonna cost more than 800 euros my goodness it's not gonna be truly be worth it at that point because mind you even though the technology is progressing and they are getting more expensive not because of just the inflation but also it's because of the just in general right the technology is getting more expensive and it's getting harder to develop and things to innovate things to progress but nevertheless it's just that longer we actually uh, continue on doing this with the technology and improving them obviously the older technology will get cheaper over the time and due to this the playstation 6 is still going to be profitable at the end of the day when they be able to sell so many of these consoles so many of these units one or two of these obviously they're not going to make any much of a profit if at all but if you continue on selling them it's there is going to be investment made at the end of the day and of course the biggest selling point in consoles market is the software is the video games is the subscription models playstation has got well pretty much everything all of that is going for it right the playstation plus subscription especially having tier system tier one two and three and yet the last tier is becoming so expensive it's like what is it 120 euros uh a year i believe that's quite a very big price it, it bumped up like almost double comparing this to when i initially started with this initiative of tier one two and three of the subscription model and nevertheless afterwards like playstation 5 pro that's getting a price bump in terms of 800 euros a completely digital console and if you want to get the disc tray you're gonna have to purchase it uh, for separately for 120 i think it was 130 euros insanity and yet there's just for a mod that is asking price <laughs> and a mod that the advantage the technology will improve in the playstation 5 pro it doesn't seem to be that significant to make an extra what is it 308 euros on top from the original base console my goodness and yet, don't forget, the play base console of the PlayStation 5 has not reduced in price either. In fact, it even increased from the four years initially when it launched. My goodness. And now we're also talking a little bit about the PlayStation 6. And, well, we found this out regarding that Intel allegedly lost the contract to develop chips for the next generation system, the PlayStation 6. AMD basically won that deal. And backwards compatibility was actually of the highest importance for the PlayStation 6. Just imagine if you would not be able to play PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games on your PlayStation 6 console. I think that would have been an inevitable death for Sony PlayStation. I actually think they wouldn't have had any sort of future. Because if you can't transition or can't carry over all of the purchases that you have made on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 to do your PlayStation 6 console, forget it. Like, you, a lot more people are just going to transition over to the PC ecosystem. And in fact, I think it might be the best decision to do about this. I think it's the best idea idea is actually well moving away from the consoles because at the end it's still going to be far more expensive to invest all your time and money and effort onto a console platform because pc is going to be cheaper at the end because even though the pc at right cost costs way more than the playstation 5 pro even because if you want to have the bells and whistles and all the best parts about it you don't even have to go to the best of the best of the equipment and stuff you can upgrade on your playstation sorry on your pc but yet don't forget the subscription model also uh, reduces the kind of a, a value of the playstation consoles because also another thing it's a closed box so Due to this, PlayStation, Sony can just shift the pricing of their video games that they create and make and put it on the consoles on store, the PlayStation Store, and inflate the price as much as pretty much that they want. And due to that, 
is PC or has a competition, Epic, right? It has Steam, it has GOG, and so many other platforms, so many different, uh, you know, stores. You can make a purchase from there, and they're going to be cheaper, and they are cheaper. It's, it's proven fact for like, what is it, 20, 30 years at this point? And PC is the better uh, uh, market that you should actually invest. Nevertheless, I do see why a console is a lot more kind of sought out, I should say, because it is an ease. It's very easy to uh, be part of that platform, right? It's a lot easier to be uh, playing video games on your console than PC, because PC, you need to update drivers, you need to pay It's a lot more complicated, basically, on PC. But a lot of people just don't want to invest that time. They don't want to bother with all this crap. And you know what? Initially, from the beginning, when I was starting up and seeing what the PC does and what are the differences, what are the components I need to have, man, it was difficult. I'm not gonna like sit here and tell you that it was an easy experience because it was not. Because I needed help. Sometimes I just couldn't get any help. Sometimes I had to look up on YouTube. YouTube sometimes is not a very good place to look up. Internet isn't either. Some places are good, but yet just it's extremely, extremely complicated. And I totally understand why people just want to, you know, sit down on the couch, turn on the console, hit play, play their favorite video game. And because of this, it's an easy experience and you're paying for it, basically. But nevertheless, it's just that PlayStation 6 is a scary, it's a scary console. It could be a scary console, because if the PlayStation 5 Pro costs 800 euros, how much the PlayStation 6 will cost in this case? Now, I don't believe that even PlayStation 6 will even reach 800 euros. I do think it will be more expensive than the PlayStation 5 initially costed. I uh, initially costed 500 euros, the PlayStation 5. Uh, I'm talking about, of course, with the CD tray. So, of course, it's 500. But if you want to go digital, it was 400 initially. So, I do think that the PlayStation 6 shoe cost 600 euros okay i'm talking about euros but i think they need to have a variant like like they had for the playstation 5 one a digital one with this uh, just a standard with the cd tray because we need the cd tray because i i don't want to make purchases digitally on the playstation store where i know it's way more expensive and i would rather have a physical copies of my games because number one i can sell them i can sell my copies of the games that i do not want anymore and it's just it's it's cheaper as well it's, it's at the end of the day it is cheaper and if you are go not gonna have the options for your playstation 6 you know console that is only going to be digital and you will not be able to attach a cd tray to it that's just like an easy kind of mark for people to okay i think i'm done with this console you know what i mean sure some people say oh, fuck, whatever who cares right but a lot, a lot of people will just like okay i'm done with your console I, I don't think they can really afford that. I don't think they, could, they should do that. I don't believe so. But the best way to do this is the way that they've done with the PlayStation 5 Pro. Even though it's a complete scam that what they're doing here as well. And it just shows that how money hungry bastards they are. But yet, if, they ha if you have an option, I'm, I still would rather pay 120, 130 euros to get that CD and attach it to my console and play my physical copies because I know I can get the physical copies far cheaper price online comparing this from the PlayStation Store. And yet there's another problem that we're noticing nowadays as well. A lot of games that are interesting games at least that are being released, they don't even get a physical copy. And oh man, that kind of sucks because in this case, you're gonna have to use the PlayStation Store if you wanna play your favorite video games on day one as well and including uh, on your console. You see, there's always these things that they're going with the direction that makes it kind of a, a compromise, makes it kind of scummy, greedy. And I'm worried, I'm very much worried. And now they're presumably that PlayStation 6 should be coming up sometime in 2027, 2028. It seems like, well, at least from the core documents, it suggests that the PlayStation 6 will not actually launch before 2028. So as people presumed and myself included, I initially thought that the PlayStation 6 will be coming out at the end of 2028. But still, there is still a possibility, perhaps maybe they could actually push that release forward 
maybe, and release it maybe 2027, hell, even go 2026. But at that case, I really don't see much of a reason for an upgrade towards the PlayStation 5 Pro. The PlayStation 5 Pro in itself is only for very, very small following of PlayStation users that want the best of the best. And I mean the very, very small, maybe like out of, what, 10 people? No, maybe like one person out of like 10 people that are buying the PlayStation 5, maybe even less. Because I actually have seen that PlayStation 5 Pro is expected to reach 12 to 13 million um, <laughs> items sold by 2029. That's like almost similar margins as it was done with the PlayStation 4 Pro. I honestly don't see it. I think it will be maybe somewhere around 8 to 9 million to 2029. Now again, as we are seeing already on Amazon, different stores and stuff, <laughs> these CD trays basically, they're, well, they're, they're sold out. Uh, unbelievable. And you'll be thinking, wait, how many people want the PlayStation 5 Pro? Insane. And because of this, Sony is testing the waters. They're testing what the consumer is willing to pay for the consoles that they would, would purchase. And if that's the case, you know what's the best idea, the best decision to do? have held three variants of the PlayStation 6 consoles, right? Have the digital, have the standard, and have the premium. The premium can cost two to 300 euros more. The standard can be like a typical price range console, say maybe 600 in this case, right? 600 euros. St and the digital can be 500, 550 if so, right? Maybe a standard basically means with the CD tray, that's it. Digital basically means without the CD tray. And a premium, it's basically the PlayStation 6 Pro, basically. But they're obviously gonna call it something else. And the halfway, halfway point, like four years afterwards, what year would that be, 2032? Jesus, just think about that. Oh my God. Yeah, then we'll have the PlayStation 6 Pro or PlayStation 6 Pro Pro. <laughs> or PlayStation uh, 6 Pro Max. <laughs> Yeah, maybe a little bit could be a little bit too convoluted and perhaps too many of these consoles not exactly good news but yeah i don't know it's just my ideas my proposal anyway man i'm very worried i do not see how this is going to be good news for a consumer because playstation sony needs a competition it's good for the business well maybe not necessarily for them right but it's good for us but now that xbox have com has completely given up and their only, their only concentration is Game Pass. This is just basically they bend their knee. And I am worried that, that we're just not seeing much of a future for uh, PlayStation because everything is gonna be ridiculously expensive. They're gonna get even more scummy because we're already seeing the first steps being taken and we can see that it is not for the consumers. And I'm worried. It seems like we're seeing the days of the PlayStation 3 era, and it's not good news. Alright guys, that's so all I want to have a little bit of a discussion relating to a very scary future of the PlayStation 6. Oh man. Alright, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, see you guys all, and have a wonderful day.